this shows you as heavy as I was. How loud are you? About 280. 18 plus percent of our children right now are obese. If you go with the flow in America today, you will end up overweight or obese, as two thirds of Americans do. I don't want to be fat for the rest of my life. I've got diabetes. Sleep apnea. High blood pressure. I get dizzy when I get up. Everything's hurting now. We don't now take this as a really serious, urgent national priority. We are all of us individually and as a nation gonna pay a really serious price. How many pounds have you lost in a lifetime? Oh, mercy. Goodness gracious, do you have a calculator? <laughs> I have lost the same 30, 40, 50 pounds probably 50 or 60 times. Upwards of 200 pounds three times in my life. 40, 45 pounds. 53 pounds. Of course, I'm a backsliding sinner, so after about a year, I was ballooning back up. But now I don't gain that back. I've gained all of that 45 back. <laughs> I'd say probably close to 300 pounds. Thousands. I've lost several of me's. I've lost hundreds of pounds in yo-yo dieting, and I, I just want it. I just want to stop. Anyone who's ever lost weight will tell you that it is harder to sustain the weight loss than to lose the weight itself. They'll tell you, oh yes, I lost weight successfully many times, but I can't keep it off. It's like people who try to stop smoking. They'll tell you, oh yeah, I was quite successful about 20 times. It might sound silly, but weight is so heavy. And it's not just on your body. Emotionally, it's so heavy because you think about it all the time. You're walking down the street, you're seeing all these nice little trim people walking down and they're dressed so cutely and you're like, I can't wear that because I'm too fat. <laughs> I was working at this company and a girl who sat next to me took a picture of me one day. And when I saw those pictures, I was like, oh. I was shocked, I was appalled, I, I was really disgusted with myself. I felt like I wasn't doing enough to stop it. I did the gym thing for months and I didn't get any results. I really didn't know what to do. At one time it was believed that body weight was completely unregulated and was simply a result of an individual's free choices having to do with food, physical activity. And if you were heavy, it meant you were choosing more food and less activity. And if, it, if you were light, it meant the opposite of that. The laws of physics relate to the regulation of body weight, energy in, energy out. If you are taking even slight excess of energy in versus what you're expending, you will gradually put on weight. We now know based on 25, 30 years of research that body weight is as tightly regulated in many ways as things like blood sugar, blood pressure, how much sodium is in your blood, and a variety of other very complex metabolic characteristics. If you compare the metabolism, body functions of an obese person when they're obese to that of a person who's never been obese, and you correct for the difference in body size, there is no difference. And this leads us to understand that obese people when obese, lean people when lean, are protecting in a sense the same, to the same extent, their existing body weight. So that when you reduce the body weight of an obese person, and the body weight of a lean person and compare the responses, they're absolutely identical. So lean people are defending their lower body weight and obese people in precisely the same way by precisely the same mechanisms are defending body weights to be 100, 200 pounds above that of a lean individual. At your usual weight, body weight is 
tightly regulated. It responds to any attempts to change it. So the question is, what happens after you've lost weight? Why don't you just maintain that reduced weight with the same vigor? Individuals losing weight are not metabolically the same as they were before they lost weight. Based on the studies that we've done, we've shown that there is a very complex response of the body to weight loss. Once the body undergoes weight reduction, it begins to respond as if it were being threatened with imminent death. The body will defend the fat that's there and try to drive you back to the weight from which you started. Consider two individuals, same gender, same age, exactly the same body weight, one of whom is at that body weight as a result of, let's say, a 10 or a 15% weight reduction, and the other who's been at that weight for their entire adult life. The weight-reduced individual will be requiring about 20% less calories per day relative to what somebody of that weight who's never lost weight would eat or eat 10% less and increase their physical activity by 10% in order to keep at that body weight. And the reason for this is that the brain begins to invoke the responses that are necessary to have you regain the weight. It slows your metabolism to below what you would expect for your lower body size, increases your drive to eat, and actually changes the function and parts of the brain that respond to palatability, that is how tasty food is, how much you like food, how much you want food. If that reduced individual goes out to lunch with her friend and they both order the same meal, that will represent a 20% overeating for the weight reduced individual, maybe quite normal for the individual who's not in that state. 20% may sound like a little, but 20% excess caloric intake a year will account for the inexorable weight regain. As far as we know, this phenomenon does not go away. So being successful for a year or two doesn't mean that you're gonna be able to go back to eating at the rate that would be appropriate for a person who'd never lost weight. Our studies indicate clearly that with regard to body weight, the body has a mind of its own. When I started to put on so much weight, I started getting worried and kept thinking, okay, this is the weight where I'm gonna get diabetes and it's all downhill from there. And then one day I was online and I found this study and I was like, maybe this could, you know, maybe this could work. is one of over a hundred subjects who we've studied in various aspects of this protocol. For science, for science, dedicating your budgets. <laughs> we need to have our study subjects under very tight environmental control. So they live in the clinical research center. individuals fed milkshakes, essentially, but we make the milkshake ourselves. We know precisely how many calories are in every drop of that formula, and we feed the individual an amount of that formula precisely calculated to keep their body weight absolutely constant for a period of four to six weeks. We adjust those calories up and down until their weight is exactly stable. They're not gaining, they're not losing. And then we do a series of metabolic and behavioral studies. Oh, oh joy.
Then we put them on 800 calories a day of this same formula diet until they've lost a little more than 10% of their weight. Then we maintain them at that reduced weight. And at that point, we do the same set of studies in order to determine what the changes in metabolism, behavior, and brain function have been. Sit inside, no talk, no move, no laugh. Put your hands on your knee, breathe normally, OK? okay. This is a very important aspect of these studies because we are not comparing person A at weight one to person B at weight two, where we're comparing person A at weight one to person A at weight two. The body's efficiency in terms of energy metabolism and drive to eat with as little as a 10% weight reduction is really quite remarkably altered in a direction that would drive a person back to their starting weight. Try to keep those RPMs up. When you lose that weight, your going. muscles become much more efficient. It means it will cost you about 20% fewer calories to walk a mile, even correcting for the fact that you're lighter, that you've lost weight. And we've looked at this in five different ways and it absolutely seems to be true. After you lose weight, you're not the same person anymore. You are a much more metabolically efficient organism. And this efficiency will persist probably for the rest of your life. These studies indicate quite clearly that there is a decline in energy expenditure and increase in the drive to eat, which can account quite easily for the very common experience of weight regain following successful weight loss. believe that your brain reads some signal from your body that tells it how many calories you have stored as energy. In the same way the gas gauge in your car tells you how many gallons of gas or how much energy you have left in the tank. When that signal falls, your body reacts, and it reacts very strongly. You've lost 10% of your body weight. Your leptin level drops substantially as a result of this. You're happy. You like what you see in the mirror. Your doctor likes the fact that your diabetes is better, your blood pressure is better. Your brain doesn't like this. If you give leptin to somebody who's at a reduced body weight, when their brain is seeing a lower level of leptin than it would like, you should have a very dramatic effect. The individual is still at their 10% lower body weight, but their leptin is at a concentration in the blood, which is what it was before they ever lost the weight. So what we're doing in a sense, in a very real sense, is attempting now to trick the brain into thinking that the fat that was lost has not been lost. The behavior, the increased hunger, the drive to eat, the changes in brain function actually are reverted back to where the individual was before they lost weight, and the increase in energy efficiency, the decline in energy expenditure, is restored back to where it was before the individual lost weight. All of a sudden, your metabolism increases, 
your muscles become their old inefficient selves, your thyroid hormone normalizes, there are changes in your appetite and how you feed, all these things. Essentially, the metabolic opposition is gone. Your brain thinks that your body fatness is at a good level. It thinks you're fatter than you are, and so it works with you as opposed to against you. So if you look at the MHC1 expression and efficiency, We've done studies on individuals who have managed by virtue of very careful attention to their food intake and very vigorous physical exercise regimens. The body does not adjust to being in a chronically weight-reduced state. The effect never goes away. And I can understand why somebody hearing this might say, oh my God, this is bad news. Now I understand why I'm having this problem, but there's no hope. And I don't see it that way at all. Without these insights, there would be no hope. But I think with them, we can begin to devise interventions. The weight loss effect. I take hope from this and otherwise wouldn't keep doing the work. And I think people who have this problem should see it this way. It's not that there's an answer to this problem around the corner or that we can do something about it in the immediate sense. But by understanding it better, I think ultimately we will be able to interfere in a way that will make it possible for people quite comfortably to maintain the degree of weight reduction which is critical to their ultimate well-being and health. We tell everybody that the likelihood that you're going to sustain the weight loss after you leave here, after you leave this very controlled environment, is small. We'll do everything we can to help you do that. You can come and see me every week or two if you want to, and I will work with you. You can work with our nutritionists, but basically it is very difficult. I'm terrified to leave this hospital. <laughs> I'm terrified to go back to the world and having my diet depend on just me. I mean, I got here in the first place because I had no self-control. Nola will face on the outside exactly the problems that she faced before she came in. She's gonna be hungry. She's gonna be driven to eat. This is gonna be a constant fight. And the question is whether or not she will be able to overcome the biological drives that are going to want to put her back to where she started. If anybody can sustain the weight loss, she can. She's committed. She has tremendous self-discipline just by virtue of being in this study. Plus, she has an excellent understanding of what's ahead of her. Just walking out the hospital and walking around the block. There's so many, so much food. There's a Wendy's, there's a McDonald's up the street. There's all the food carts outside. There's a guy who sells hot dogs in the corner and there's this one that sells honey nuts. And you can smell them a block away and you know you're coming towards them. The most you can do is just close your eyes and just keep, you know, just walk, don't stop, don't look around. You're bombarded by food everywhere you go. So it's, the idea of going out there and being strong enough to do the right thing, food-wise, it's really, really hard. To have gone through the past nine months only to ruin it by eating too much? If I regain the weight, oh no. Instead of checking into this hospital, I have to check into an asylum because I would go crazy. pretty well. At first, it wasn't. 
Once I thought I had a handle on it, and then I didn't because then I started seeing the weight picking up. I wanted to check myself right back in the hospital. Now it's better. I know some of my limits now. It was only like five or so pounds. The weight that initially went on when I first came out has been coming right back off. Looking back, it was more than worth it. I stayed and I stuck it out. I really have no regrets for doing this study. I'm really happy I did.